should be able to see the tide zones, hopefully. I'm just going to mosey along the coastline and check the tide zone for life. So this time, instead of taking pictures, I'm going to take a video. And this is supposed to be a high quality video. There's one more building uh, construction going on right over the hill there. But nobody's walking down on these coastlines. There's no sewage, they're not even running into the coastlines. And so we've done this in the spring, we've done it in the summer, now we're doing it in the fall. And those videos are up on my uh, YouTube channel, Dana Drumford. We're slowly going to edge in closer and slow down at the same time. So we're tucked away over here and we're out of the swell, so to speak. We're out of the swell, almost. So that's pretty cool. You might notice it some of the times rising and falling into the foreground. But if you're moving along at a few kilometers an hour, it's tolerable. But if you come to a stop, I get seasick sometimes. I started to get seasick out there this morning. So there's a crow. We've seen three crows earlier. I seen a seagull trying to eat a starfish. Just so past the island where I've done the live stream a little bit this morning. So I can live stream from my cell phone, but I can't live stream from my computer. Way to go, nuclear industry. Not quite as good as you thought you were. Disgusting hackers. So the nuclear industry got me barred from live streaming as soon as they start the public relations. You got a billion dollars to spend on lobbying. Uh, media coming out and saying tritium and treat it over and over and over and some of the articles are just it's not disgusting I had to give it up this week I couldn't handle it we've been at it since July the 13th covering the biggest the biggest uh, threat to humanity in history if I'm lucky I get 60 views on BitChute Hopefully a couple of hundred views on YouTube. If you work really hard for a decade, YouTube can have that kind of success, right? And so the, the lie is the only thing they want told. The lie is the only thing that's important. I'll zoom back a bit. Getting anxious here. Because the only problem with it is you're doing it with one hand. You can operate the gimbal and the camera with one hand, and I got the zoom lens on, so I'm not always paying attention. My apologies. I'll start paying better attention here in a few seconds. And this is supposed to be. I'm, I'm slowly nosing into the coastline, so I'll zoom back a little bit. So we got a seagull there, and bored out of his mind. Be there any second. There he goes. Be pretty bored looking. <laughs> I almost got a good shot on that. Of course now. Of course I'm off course. And so you will starve to death if you shipwreck on this coastline where there's no access to uh, roads or houses. There's nothing left here. And so the mussels are gone. Usually this is covered mussels, is covered in algaes. There's quite a few species of algaes, even like the, the kelp cabbage or kelp weed, which is the most popular, uh, popular algae, kelp on the entire planet, it's everywhere, is not here. Like there's little strands there, don't get me wrong, 
There's nothing healthy there. There's no adult. There is some baby uh, barnacles. There's some baby uh, mussels. And I mean baby on, on that entire sense of the word. Nothing is healthy. My sonar is not working because it's so shallow. I'd have to pay attention for a second here, folks. That looks good. Looks good. Now, I think uh, the most I can shoot with this video is 30 minutes at a time. And so 30 minutes seems like a good little video. I'll try to post it in the quality that it's in instead of converting it. Maybe I will convert it, I don't know. I'll try uploading to see how long it takes. If it takes so long, hours and hours and hours. Let's see, anyway. It might not be too big, I guess. And so you got seagulls, never a seagull feeding. Never a group goes, there's nothing feeding in the ocean whatsoever. I gotta nose my way back in there. Nine. Um, it should be very populated with shells up on the beaches, different shells that wash up in bad weather too, right? But there's, you know, the beach has been here a lot longer than we have, and so there should be lots of shellfish and decayed shellfish, clams. There should be, you know, like high tide lines of, uh, of algae washed up. And there, there is snails. We found two spots here with snails, and they're very small. But they're not they're not super small, but they're small. But they stand out too. But there's only two of them. And there's not much garbage washed up on the beaches when you're looking at the beaches. I've been noticing that for the last seven, eight, nine years. It used to be an atrocious. atrocious. It's a little tricky. Round two. I'll try to keep an eye on the camera, but uh, I think we're okay here now. So there's a little bit of algae, kelp weed. For kelp weed, would you, if there's nothing else to kelp weed, would you normally take it over, right? It's so prolific. So this year, the 46 million migratory birds, and we're the biggest migratory route on the entire planet for seabirds, would come through here, and they would nest. They would nest here, and they would raise their hatchlings and fledglings, and there would be shit all over the cliffs all the way up until next year. But the cliffs are actually empty. There's no shit on them. Well, there's a few spots. And, but the gulls are not feeding in the ocean. The birds that we're seeing are not, there are no migratory birds. The, the species we're seeing are not feeding in the ocean. They are feeding at the fish plants. And we had 16 trips that are long days each time. That quantifies that assertion, right? And you can see, like you see this little white sludge type thing on the rocks there? Uh, you might see it. It's in the middle, I think, right there now. Um, that's barnacles, little baby barnacles. If you touch them at all, they crumble away. Very fragile, very brittle. And so normally on these rocks, it's pretty slimy too. Very dangerous going in there at low tide and trying to climb up to the high tide line because you got all that slime. And because it's such a rocky coastline, unlike the Pacific, it's pretty easy to get hurt. And we've seen the same thing in the Pacific Ocean from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska. And I've done research expeditions for six years along that coastline. Let me zoom back for you, sorry. I got cocky and moved back in again. 12 feet of water, piece of cake. Well, I can't hurt the boat. The boat's got a Kevlar coating on the bottom of it. And I put it through its paces, too. So that's barnacles. Let's go in and look at them. I can't do it anymore. I gotta go and look at them. That means I gotta get back on my course because the wind's gonna pop me. But uh, the, the bottom of this boat is Kevlar. And coatings. You can't you can't punch a hole in it. 
It's designed to go in, bang into a rock, pick up survivors, and that's what I've done for quite a few years. And so that's barnacles. It's designed to go in, pick up the rocks. It's got a flat bottom underneath it, but the, it, the bottom is tapered down, and then it's got a flat bottom of about two and a half feet wide. So it's meant to balance on the rock instead of tipping on the rock, right? So yeah, that's barnacles. That's baby barnacles. Where's the adults to? The adults only been here for a couple of million years, so where, where are they? And if you go into the tide zones, a low tide, uh, like if you go along the coastline with the sidewalks and roads, you won't find shells. Two ducks? Holy shit. Snuck in behind me. Say hi to me. Let me turn my nose in there before they take off. They're probably going to frig off as soon as they see me. So generally, if they can't see your face, they'll stay there. I can't spot it from my end. Good here, I gotta go up. Oh. The boat's off target. I'm zoomed in all I can zoom in. That's pretty awesome. So they're in the tide zone trying to feed. There's two of them. I can't really see it very good on my end. Because I got a little screen, right? You guys have got a big screen. It probably showed up really good. I'm just going to keep drifting down there and see if they'll let me hang out with them for a minute. It's been a long time. It's been a decade since we got that close to a duck. They're notoriously shy, right? So these are probably uh, residential ducks. Probably young ones on top of that. There's not a lot of traffic out there. Oh. They're like, oh, don't like that at all. But he looked at me and he was like, come on, let's go. You go ahead, my little duckies. You go ahead, my little duckies. I'm going to turn the boat around. I'll back up and get away from let them. Less water, 10 feet of water. I'm gonna turn the boat around, get back on the trail again here. Back on the trail, back but I have rock with uh, green on it. That's where we drifted in and looked at. Uh, so we're gonna head out. Out. There. That way, on our side. We got 13 minutes in, so hopefully we got another 17 minutes to go at least. Which means I can get quite a ways out. Get back into the shoreline. So there's a bit of algae. There's no life, there's no little birds. There's no shore life whatsoever. No insects. There's no frost here yet. There should be some insects flashing around. Lots of grass and trees right there. Hang on. I'll get there. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm zoomed all the way back. I'll just move offshore a little bit because I got the zoom lens on. We're hoping this translates into what I'm seeing for everybody. Looks like there's some baby mussels on that little spot there. There's a we got little little stragglers of kelp cab, kelp weed. That's the only algae I'm seeing. I don't know what you're seeing. I got a small screen, but I'm looking right at the shoreline. I don't see any other algae. There's baby barnacles that I know because we looked at them this year a number of times. They're very fragile. There's no predatory, there's no birds. See all the little bushes up there? Right? Should be all kinds of little birds in this territory. 
It's a great spot for birds. There should be nesting birds here all spring and summer, this whole area. Nobody's walking around this area, right? This is open ocean right alongside of it. They've been nesting here long before we showed up 400 years ago. And so we're interested in the tide zone. We're also interested in birds. So we got two ducks. That was amazing. It was so amazing. I feel blessed to actually see two of them royal. That's pathetic because this should be loaded with hundreds and hundreds of species in every direction you go. Now what have I got done? A little bit shallow. I think we're okay. We're gonna go between that rock up right there and the shoreline up ahead of us. And uh, we're hanging out with the kelp today. This is really nothing else. Yeah, the barnacles, you can see they're trying. But where did all the adults go? Where did all the snails go? Where did all the mussels go? Where did all the, the marine, the birds and that, that are dependent upon these little tidal zones? Because they'll come here at low tide. And they'll break open mussels, they'll drop them on the rocks there. And there's not, when you look at walk on the beach there, there's no broken shells on the beaches. There's no broken shells on the side of the road when the birds used to drop them on the sidewalk the side of the road every low tide, right? So there's always the gnawing shells if you were walking along that spot. And you do it all year long. Now, now you can find them at the fish plant or McDonald's. What do you think McDonald's is going to do to the genetics of the birds when they go back and raise their youngs? <laughs> They only got a four to ten cents of level rate this year. That's not going to repopulate the area. A little sketchy. We're emptying by the rock. It's on the outside of this. We're going up the inside. And uh, my 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 sonar doesn't seem to. Uh, work very good when I get in like 10 feet of water, which is where you really want the sounder to work good. And that's a new transducer I put on a few years ago. I'm not going to explain to you what happened to the other one <laughs> and the prop at that time. We were up by Alaska one time, it was seven years ago or something, and I was pretty cocky with the GPS I was using. And there was a rock that wasn't on the GPS, and I hit it. Well, the tide was rising, but uh, I hit it at about 20 kilometers an hour or more. Man, I thought I was a dumb duck. Well, you got pontoons on the boat, right? But I thought I'd done some serious damage. And uh, I took the boat up the next time I went ashore and had a look at it. There was no damage. I've hit a lot of rocks with this boat because that's where you're working. You're working in the rock pile. It wasn't unusual to kill three or four props a year. When we're looking for the species that are missing. And they used to attack me. Dana won't bring in species and, and get them tested. And I took 600 uh, sample bags with me, but there was no species. <laughs> the 7,000 highly visible species in the tidal zones were gone. So we had to go back year after year to quantify a statement like that, right? And they arrested me, gave me gag orders for goodness sakes for three and a half years to protect some of their assets. They, they ran my media, my name through the mainstream media and just turned me into a demon. The, 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 the jackals in the nuclear industry were all over YouTube with all kinds of hideous videos making just monstrous claims. At one point they said I was bleaching, I had a 45 gallon drum of bleach, and they were putting this comment everywhere, I had a 45 gallon drum of bleach, and I was out bleaching these small islands, and then a couple of days later I go back with the camera and say, look, there's nothing here, it's all gone. And uh, this was, like I was on the ocean at the time, so when you go in, to get groceries and fuel, you check the email and uh, some of my messages, I start seeing all these messages of 
that comment. I was horrified that anybody would suggest something like that. It's des that was desperation, right? It's like that story now that Fukushima only released 2.2 grams of tritium, of all, of all things. You can't read a single of tritium when it's uranium, plutonium, and curium everywhere and everything else. Tritium is one of the weakest singles. It's still a nasty isotope. It's still a plague, and Canada is one of the biggest contributors to that particular plague. Canada is by far the biggest tritium producer on the planet. These can-do reactors here. There's my oil light. I wasn't very happy. I put additive uh, in the oil today. Uh, oil conditioner. The door lube uh, uh, material. It's really good for quieting your engine down. But if I run it at really low RPM, sometimes it'll do that. So uh, I'm not seeing anything but a few. I am seeing that little, the little um, barnacles, the baby barnacles. No adult barnacles, no adult of anything. No colors. And in the rock, in the beaches where the rocks are too, there's nothing under the rocks. There's no crabs, there's no little eels, there's no little tiny flounders. And last year, uh, or not last year, this year in summer, we, we had a lot of days where there was no wind, no waves, the ocean was crystal clear. And we we're I was going in all these little nooks and crannies. So we got about 100 kilometers of this is what we're using for our study, our field studies. And the migratory birds didn't show up, 46 million birds. They didn't show up last year and they didn't show up the year before. But yet officially the birds were here and gone. Okay, it was, it was only 2.2 grams got out of the four melter reactors in Fukushima and all the birds were here and gone on the east coast. There's nothing wrong on the west coast. Oh, this is a little tiny bird up there. That's awesome. I think it's a robin. Yeah, that's a robin. It's too far to get him on camera. I wanted you to see the shoreline and the species. A bit of algae, a bit of barnacles, and there's nothing else. There's nothing trying to feed there because, and the tide is almost down to the low tide now. It's not like a full moon low tide. It's a low tide, which is it's relevant. But you need a full moon in order to see a few sea urchins. They're down there. There's not, uh, you can see them when you're going along the shoreline, but there's nothing sticking out of the water. That's, uh, that's the preferred real estate. That was normally covered in all kinds of little, and in all the algaes, you got all these invertebrates that are the backbones. And so you got this whole ecosystem, and a lot of uh, insects are dependent upon the low tide, right? They live in harmony with the, the rise and fall of the tides. We got a couple of seagulls in there coming up. It looks like a little beach bird. That could be the Arctic turn. I thought they would be gone by now. We've seen only seen two this summer, Arctic turns. You usually see them in huge groups. They're really magical the way. That's the oil light again. Being a pain in the ass. I'm just gonna give it a throttle. My apologies. Well, so we got seagulls here, low tide, two of them coming up. They're bored out of their trees. Yeah, and I can't remember, there's a rock out here at, low, at a really full moon low tide, there's urchins around, we, the video's up on my site from the summer, we got 16 trips out here, now there was a colony that lives right here on these rocks and cliffs and on land there, and it's a pretty big colony, there's around at least a thousand, maybe even more of seagulls, and 
there was only a few fledglings that I seen, but I didn't see them until the fledglings learned to fly. They were hid away on the landmass to himself. There was nothing on the, there wasn't very much along the coastline. And normally many species will raise their fledglings in the same spot of this coastline. Because you're out, you're out in the middle of nowhere, right? You're in the middle of nowhere. So we're at 25 minutes. I believe this cuts off on its own at 30 minutes. And if it does, I'm going to start shoot the next one and keep going because it's not too bad out there. I was going to do the first one based upon um, how bad ground swell was as I got further out. And it's doable to keep going, so we'll keep going. I can't get the boat out of the water for another hour and a half. The tide is just low tide. Now the tide has to come up for about an hour before I can uh, put the trailer deep enough in the water to get the boat onto it. And uh, next time I come out, I'll use uh, the smaller lens and shoot the same thing. And then I have a comparison because you're both, you're both get, going to get the same tone, the same color. You just won't have the same cloudy day. That's all probably. But for for color-wise, you'll get the same tones. They're both the same lens company, right? And I still haven't like the adapter for my Micro Four Thirds. I got six Micro Four Thirds lenses, and three of them are manuals, and three are motor-driven, right? The motor driven one, the motor driven lens, is adapters are, are so expensive I can't uh, justify getting them right. It's ridiculous. And you want that autofocus when you're doing what I'm doing right now? You got the gimbal, right? The gimbal gives you that a smooth uh, transition along the shoreline if I don't screw up the focus not the focus but the, the height and uh, some of you might recognize this footage from the summer I've done this somewhere in the summer just little scraggly kelp weed right the best day of it. I've had surgery on my hands five times to get sea urchin spines out of it. Where I've had to go ashore, go to the hospital. A couple times I was lucky enough to get a plastic surgeon. But uh, the ones that got the sea urchin spines that are gone through the bones in my hands, you can't get them out. And you've done the best you could, but he said you really can't get them out because they have micro barbs, right? And so the arthritis on my left hand gets really bad sometimes. Today is one of those sometimes. <laughs> because I got the wheel in my left hand and the gimbal in my right hand. And I gotta have my eyes forward but my eyes sideways at the cabin. So I'll move in a little bit closer. So pretty dismal on the shoreline. A little bit, a little bit disappointed to see nothing recovered. And that Fukushima has left nothing untouched. So six years of doing the Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska for four to five months a time each year without coming home, doing species counts. And I put that footage in that pictures and the GPS is up at my website to nuclear proctologist I live. And they've been there for many, many years and nobody's quoting me, nobody's saying, hey, you know, what about this guy? Or, this guy got an awful lot of uh, documentation. He's saying it's an extinction event. Nope, nothing. I mean Dana's a bastard, piece of shit. Six comma.